Real quick before this video starts, I just want to say that this video is taken from one of my viewer music submission live streams where um, you can send in songs for me to listen to. Someone actually paid for me to listen to this on that stream, which is insane. But um, yeah, we also do free requests and stuff over there. So if there are any songs you've been dying for me to listen to or anything like that, stop by one of the streams and you can send in stuff for me to listen to. But uh, yeah, besides that, uh, enjoy the video. Oh my god, chat, we're two songs away from the swamp. It's album time, ladies and gentlemen. It's album time. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Human Reviews channel, and today we are listening to Revolver by The Beatles. I just got sent in £34 by Makarik, uh, also known as... I actually don't know how to say your username. But I'll display the username on screen. We just got paid £34 to listen to Revolver. I didn't think I was going to be listening to this album until next month. But hey, here we are. The 2022 mix? Okie dokie. Let me get this up on album of the year as well. This album came out in... 1966. It is 14 tracks, 34 minutes. Surprisingly short length for a 14 track album. Uh, this thing has some absolute, absolutely huge songs on it. Like Yellow Submarine and Tomorrow Never Knows. Uh, I remember I learned Tomorrow Never Knows for my, my drum lessons once. That was fun. I've kind of heard this album before. I listened to the whole thing front to back on Brad Taste stream before, but I don't remember much about it outside of obviously Yellow Submarine. I've heard She Said She Said as well, actually, and uh, Tomorrow Never Knows. Besides that, I know nothing. Track one, Taxman. One, two, three. Original one mix now. We got paid specifically to listen to the 2022 mix. The Beatles or Queen? I'll say the Beatles. That fade out is terrible. Wow. Wow, that literally killed the pacing of the song. But that song was pretty good. That's a pretty good opener. It does kind of feel like just standard Beatles, but. There are some absolutely fantastic riffs in there. I think the vocals are amazing on that one. Like, legit, the vocals stand out in the best way possible on that song. And I actually think the writing is pretty interesting. I don't know, normally the openers end up being one of my least favorite songs on Beatles albums, but I actually think that song's pretty pretty good. And that one at 8.6. Nice opener. Uh, next track, Eleanor Rigby. This is another pretty big song, I think. at the window wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door what does he... i am loving the instrumental on this one with it just being um just being the strings as the instrumental it's actually pretty cool a lot of people in the chat well, a lot of, uh, people in the chat were um, like freaking out about the this version of the mix, saying like, "Oh, this the the mono mix is better. The mono mix is better." I actually like the stereo mix. It adds uh, an element of depth that I feel like might be missing if it was mono, especially with the strings. I feel like the strings that they're really helped by the stereo mix, and even the backing vocals that are like pan to the back of the left channel. It, it adds a lot of depth. I think that song was a really interesting little experiment with it uh, being like purely strings carrying the instrumental thro throughout nothing else just some backing vocals to like add a little bit of depth to the song besides that it's just it's just strings i actually like that song a lot give that one like a high eight like an 8.8 .8. that's nice I probably wouldn't return to it all that much but that's pretty good i'm only sleeping Ah, the stream got taken down. We're back. Hey, the Beatles, they, 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 they just get us taken down sometimes, you know what I'm saying? YouTube don't like it when you listen to the Beatles. Of 
this is actually fantastic. It's so weird. That is my favorite song up to this point. That one gets a nine. Yeah, I thought that was fantastically recorded. It was actually, it actually sounded trippy and experimental. The vocals were fantastic on that one. I th the pacing was absolutely amazing as well. That is, uh, yeah, that's a very strong track. It's not one of my absolute, like, favorites by the Beatles or anything, but yeah, that was pretty good. Next track, uh, Love You, lo Love You Too. That is the wrong two. I think this is like the strongest start we've had to a Beatles album so far. Like the strongest early crop of tracks. This is, um... This song is... It just, it just sounds amazing. The Eastern influences are implemented so well. The production is great. I love the, the vocals on all of these songs so far, this one included. Like, th this is like the strongest beginning we've had to a Beatles album. Yeah, the front leg of this album so far is off to an absolutely fantastic start. Besides, I I'll say the first track, which does kind of just feel like standard Beatles. Each of these songs have been so dynamic and so unique, and have felt actually experimental. You know, I always cringe when people are like, oh, the Beatles are the most experimental band of all time. But, but here, it's like, actually, they're taking risks. And they're trying new things, and they're making actual experiments with their sound. And it's impressive, and it's paying off, and it's working surprisingly really well. I was expecting this to be my least favorite of the Beatles albums up to this point, but right now it's looking like it's going to be... Probably not over Abbey Road is my favorite, but I think I might be liking this more than the White Album up to this point. You know, this song is, uh... 8.6 for me. Here, There, and Everywhere up next. <laughs> It's better structured than the White Album for sure. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't feel anywhere near as all over the place as, as the White Album does. This feels a lot more consistent. Man, this is smooth as hell. Okay, that song has now taken my spot for my favorite on the album up to this point. That was a 9.3. That was a such a sweet song that was also smooth as all hell. That bass line, fantastic. The backing vocals, immaculate. Even just the, the lead vocals and the vocal production on the lead vocals is so good. Yeah, hands down my favorite up to this point. That was so good. They're, they're cooking with this album right now. I'm liking how short this is too. There's no real long songs on the album. Like, like they're all in the two minute range. And I really like that. That they're just keeping it really simple. They're just making something that's quick and really to the point. Which was probably my main problem with the White Album. Is that it felt way too long and way too scattershot. This is just getting straight to the point, And I, I love that. Next track, Yellow Submarine. Everyone has heard this song, In okay? The town where I was born, okay, Ringo was cooking with this lived one. A man, as of his okay. life, in the land of submarines. Listen, chat, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I actually like this song. I'll admit it. Yellow submarine, I think this song's alright. Listen, Ringo is by far the weakest songwriter out of all of them, okay? No no hate to Ringo Starr, I don't hate Ringo or whatever, despite the fact that a lot of people think I do. Listen, he's the weakest songwriter out of the- out of the band, but... 
when he cooks, he cooks, okay? Octopus's Garden is a great song. This song, honestly, I don't love it, but it's some goofy, silly fun. It's kind of catchy, and I can't bring myself to hate this song, okay? I actually kind of like it. Ringo, best drummer, not even close to being in the, maybe even the top 100 drummers of all time. But he, that's not saying he's bad. That is not saying he's bad. Okay. He was still good. But like, come on. That's kind of copium. You remove him from the Beatles and no one's saying he's the best. I'm just saying, take him out of the Beatles, no one's saying he's the best. Yeah. Now back in vocals are a little annoying here. Yeah. Listen, this song gets so much crap. People are like, oh, this song sucks. It's annoying. Ringo, worst songwriter of all time. Listen, is it the weakest song on the album up to this point? Yes. Is Ringo probably, well, not even probably, is Ringo the weakest songwriter of the bunch? Yes. Is Ringo overrated as a drummer? Yes. But when he cooks, he cooks. Apparently, his ocean-themed songs are his best, as I think Octopus's Garden is great. And I think this song is also pretty good. Unironically, I can't bring myself to hate this song. It is a 7.4. It's a flat 7, I guess. I, I, I can't give it, like, higher than a flat 7, I don't think. But listen. Listen. It's fun. It's silly. It's a little ridiculous. There are some bits of it that are a little annoying. But I still find it charming, and I still think it is a fun song. It's a 7. It's good. Okay? I, would I return to it on my own? Not a chance in hell. But whenever I do hear it, I'm like, okay, that was fine. Up next we have a very good song. We have She Said She Said I'm Next. It's one of the catchiest songs, it's one of their most creative songs, it's one of my favorite examples of how the Beatles layer vocals as well. The production is insane on this song, it's so good. I don't even hate the fade out. I think the fade out actually is kind of okay. That's the best song on this album and one of the best Beatles songs, genuinely. The song's fantastic. It's one of their catchiest songs, it's one of their most unique songs, one of their most creative and playful songs. Love the vocal layering on this one. It's one of the like the best examples of their vocal layering and how strong it can be and how much it can elevate a track. The backing vocals at the end here are great as well. The way it fades out doesn't even bug me, which normally fade outs bug me. I, I, I basically love everything about this song. I do love everything about this song. Even the writing, I think, is super interesting. They, they, they were cooking with this one. They were, uh, they were honestly cooking with the, this one. That song's a 10. Up next, we have A Good Day Sunshine. sun is out I've got something I can laugh about I feel the sun is shining down I recognize this song as well my feet. piano is great those claps actually work really well normally like having these claps sunshine. keeping the beat like this would annoy the hell out of me but I think it works here yeah. that was another one of my favorites up to this point I think I give that one a 9.2 that was again the Beatles are cooking up some of their catchiest songs on this album. Like, every single song on here is just so fun. They're, they're not like big, massive, conceptual think pieces or anything that are like super trippy and hypnotic and pushing the boundaries of music or anything. They're just fun, experimental songs where the Beatles are trying something different on every track. And it's working a lot better in my opinion, than the White Album did. Because it's a lot more um, compact and a lot more straight to the point. I'm loving this. I am actually loving this album so far. Like a surprising amount. Genuinely, I thought this was probably going to be my least favorite up to this point, but I I I'm actually loving it.
Next track, and your bird can sing. Even that song, that isn't like my favourite on the album or anything, it's just a straightforward, fun, 60s rock song. It's well produced, fantastic vocals in here. You can even see how this song influenced the, um, the, the Billy, Billy Joel song, Uptown Girl. Is that a Billy Joel song? That is a Billy Joel song, isn't it? Yeah, this song reminded me a lot of Uptown Girl. Yeah, you got that one, and 8.8. .8. Not like my absolute favourite up to this point, but still, even the... Even the songs that aren't, like, blowing me away as much are still just fun as hell. This is probably, like, the easiest to digest Beatles album I've heard yet. It's definitely... I don't want to necessarily say simplest. But it's it's definitely the one that is the most digestible up to this point. Uh, next track for No One. Your day breaks, your mind aches, you find that all linger up she takes her time and doesn't feel she has to hurry cried for no one a love that should have lasted years she says that long ago she knew someone but now he's gone she doesn't need him that should have lasted years i'm not quite as crazy about that song as i am with most of the others on the album up to this point. But I still found it to be pretty enjoyable, pretty catchy. It just felt like the most formulaic up to this point and the most predictable. The song was still pretty good, I'll give it like a flat 8. Even that song that I'm not as crazy on, I still feel like I would see myself returning to it a decent amount. I still found that song to be catchy and enjoyable. Just a little formulaic and a little predictable. Probably wouldn't return to it as much as like the other songs on the album up to this point, but it does make it bad in any way. still think it's an 8. Dr. Robert. I have to agree with you that that was one of the weakest up to this point. I don't think it's... Yeah, that song was still good. It just feels like Yellow Submarine, a little weaker than the rest of them. There are some elements of the song I found annoying, like the Dr. Robert, like that thing I just kind of bugged me a little bit. And the pacing of that one kind of felt a little off. This is the first song where I'm like, okay, I wish it was a little longer to be fleshed out a little bit more. But, besides that, it's still good, still fantastically produced, I still like the vocals, I still think the writing is pretty decent. Give it a 7... like a 7.2. Still good, still a good track, just not really one I would return to at all, unless I'm listening to the album front to back. Because it wouldn't be a skip in that scenario. Next track, I want to tell you. This is so good. Yeah, the walking. You know, people will say that like the stereo mix. I've seen so many people make complaints about the stereo mix, that it like completely kills the tone and the dynamics of the album and whatnot. I disagree. It feels so filled out with the stereo mix, like the way the different vocal takes are panned. And the way the song at the beginning comes in from the right to come to straight to the middle, and the way the snare is panned a little bit to the left, it adds a lot of depth. I don't get the hate for the stereo mix. I think the stereo mix sounds great. Yeah. 
I'm with Fantano on this one. He said he thinks the stereo mix improved the album. I haven't heard the mono mix, but I don't imagine I'd like it as much as this. Yeah, that song was, st again, just another super catchy, super fun, incredibly well-produced track. Uh, like, all of these songs, I I I'm sort of getting the same thing from a lot of them, where it's just a short little burst of a really fun little experiment from the band. But that's kind of all I need from this album at this point. I'm not expecting anything super big or super wide scale or super grand like there is on, say, Abbey Road. I'm just enjoying how simple this is. And the stereo mix is adding a lot to that. That one is like an 8.7? Track 13, Gotta Get You Into My Life. Songs are so you good. Are meant to be. If I'm true, I'll never leave, and if I do, I know the way there. It's one of the best vocal performances on the album up to this point. I love when, um, I love when Paul does his shouty voice. It sounds great. Man, I again, I'm I'm shocked at how much I'm liking this. It feels like this should be the Beatles album that I dislike the most up to this point. With it being all two, two and a half a minute, short little, very simple songs. If, for, especially from the Beatles with the recording equipment equipment they had back then. But no, it doesn't, I'm I'm glad that they're making something without like the Abbey Road ambition. I, I, I like that they're just making something fun. That song in particular, like, it, it, it had a great vocal performance from Paul McCartney. The pacing is actually perfect for a song in this style. The horns sounded fantastic. I love how just ridiculous and wild this one was. It's it, it's like a nine for me. It's I love this. Right, chat. I am uh, having a nosebleed right now. So we're going to have to delay the final song while I go clean this up. I just realized a bit of blood on my hand after I cleaned my nose. I'll be back in a sec. Way back. The last song is very good. Okay, this album ends on a, one of its strongest uh, notes. Love that it brings in the uh, the in, uh, insta Eastern influences again. Like the production is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, this, like, everything here is perfection. Vocals, uh, production, the actual super trippy, psychedelic sounds that they're incorporating, the Eastern influence as well. The thing that's bugged me the most about the Beatles up to this point is people saying that, oh, everything the Beatles did, it was so innovative, it's so incredible, it's so iconic. They, like, their albums are some of the best music ever made. And outside of a few moments on Abbey Road, I've not agreed up to this point. Like, I loved Abbey Road. I thought it was incredible. I thought the White Album was great as well. But I've never gotten it. But it's songs like this that make me get it. You know what I'm saying? This song is like, th th when I hear the Beatles and the reputation they have, it's a song like this that comes to mind. You know what I'm saying? I never noticed how great the bass line on this song was. I've always focused on the drums. Unironically, I think that song is a 10. Listening to it with good headphones has like brought it up to that next level for me. The song is amazing. Straight up. This is like... It's songs like this where I see, like, the reputation the Beatles have and go, okay, I kind of get it. 
I, I like I've li I like all their other stuff. Abbey Road, I gave like a nine. The White Album, I gave a high eight. Like I, I think both of those albums are great. But outside of a few moments, I, I've just never been able to picture, like, the best band to ever exist. But then, it, songs like this kind of make me see it, you know what I'm saying? Song is a 10. Yeah, I like this album a surprising amount. I actually found myself really enjoying this. I expected this to be my least favorite up to this point, but it's ended up surprising me. Its simplicity is its strong suit, as the band just make very simple little experiments ranging from two to two and a half minutes, the longest song only being three minutes. They bring in lots of different influences, particularly a lot of Eastern influence on here, which I think is pretty cool. And they make 14 fun songs. Some of them are on it, even go above that and reach like the status of being absolutely incredible, like She Said She Said and Tomorrow Never Knows. But for the most part, I think this is just a really fun, extremely solid, very, very consistent album. Add up my scores, and then I will tell you what my overall score for this album is. I'm feeling an 8.7 out of 10 on this album. That has grown to be a flat 9. Uh, this is a very re-listenable, very consistent album, and honestly, it's only growing on me. Thank you all so much for watching this video, if I end up turning this into a video. Um, yeah, The Beatles, Revolver. Did not expect to listen to this album at the time I did, I thought it was gonna be next month that I listened to it, but hey. Uh, we got donated the album, thank you Makarik for sending this in. Um, solid ass album, great album, another W from The Beatles in my opinion. I thought this was just a really consistent, really fun experience front to back let me know what you think of this album down below do you love it do you hate it why uh, sh uh, uh let me know what other albums you want me to listen to in the future what beatles album should i cover next link in the description to my discord and my gaming channel if you want to head over to the discord or see some more gaming stuff from me and uh yeah i will see you all whenever i next stream or upload goodbye